Hey, Deserving Listeners, today's episode is just for patrons of the podcast on patreon.com, but I have a little intro first. This is going to be a deep dive on love bombing. There is a lot of talk about love bombing on the internet and among clients, and I thought I would do a deep dive on it so I could learn more about it and also explain it to all y'all out there. Also, at the end of this episode, I'm going to analyze Big Ed from 90 Day Fiance. Is he a narcissist? Is he love bombing Liz? Did he love bomb Rose? If you're into that show, you might be interested in that at the end of this episode. But first, let's go into the definition of love bombing. There are two main types of love bombing, which are really very different from each other, even though most people will conflate the two on the internet anyway. The first type is the type that is often discussed on the internet, but it's a rare type. And these are my definitions based on my experiences in the literature. So love bombing is a conscious attempt to manipulate and control a person using grand demonstrations of affection. So this is a conscious attempt, meaning the person knows they are love bombing and are doing it on purpose to manipulate and control someone by using very big demonstrations of affection and attention. So essentially the person is giving all sorts of love and attention, particularly at the beginning of a relationship to manipulate and control someone. And again, this is done on purpose. The person, the love bomber knows they are love bombing. These people are sometimes psychopathic or sadistic abusers. And like I said, this is what is usually being discussed on the internet, even though this is a very rare type of love bombing in my experience. The second main type of love bombing is a subconscious effort to gain attachment security through hasty and extreme affection. Often with those suffering from narcissistic personality disorder, borderline personality disorder, or histrionic personality disorder. Uh, cluster B, essentially. The rest of the cluster B besides psychopaths. Anyway, so again, to review this, this is a subconscious, meaning that the love bomber does not know they are love bombing. They're not doing it on purpose. They are not doing it to gain control or to manipulate necessarily. They are actually uh, doing it as a desperate attempt to gain attachment security. And they are being extremely hasty and extremely extreme in their affection towards the target. Again, these people are suffering from cluster B personality disorders, narcissism, borderline, histrionic. Um, and it's very different from the first type, right? The second type I have yet to hear or read discussed in public. All the discussions seemingly are about the very conscious attempt by someone by using love bombing to control another person, instead of talking about what I've seen in my clinical life, which is a subconscious effort to gain attachment security. Okay, so love bombing can occur in many different types of relationships. They can occur within abusive romantic relationships, abusive friend relationships, abusive work relationships, etc. Also, pimps might use love bombing to recruit and control sex workers. Also, within high control organizations, such as gangs, cults, and churches, the organizations might use love bombing as a tool of recruitment and retainment of members. So love bombing is not just in the beginning of a dating relationship. It can be in the beginning of a friend relationship or a work relationship or in a, at a you know, pimp relationship or with a gang, cult, or church they might all use love bombing as an attempt to control. Now, often when it comes to cults and gangs and pimps, they are very much knowingly using love bombing. But when it comes to romantic relationships or friend relationships or work relationships, I find most often it is a subconscious effort to gain attachment security through hasty and extreme affection. Okay, so let me tell you a typical story of love bombing. This is within a romantic relationship, but of course this could, love bombing, like I said, could be in cults or organizations or at work, but, and I'll get more into that later. But this is a, you know, typically on the internet, people are talking about romantic type love bombing. So let, let me give you a typical story. All right, so you meet someone for a date and you hit it off really quick. You stay up all night talking. So I'm going to refer to 
you are the target and the victim, and they are the love bomber. I'm just going to say they. So you meet someone for a date. You hit it off really well. You stay up all night talking. They want to see you again right away, and you say yes because you're into it. You see each other almost every day. You're really into them, and they're really into you. They tell you that they're in love with you. They tell you that you're the best person that they have ever met, and you believe them. Within a short amount of time, they say, I've never felt like this before. I think I'm falling in love with you. All I think about is you all the time, you and me. Also, you've never felt so seen and heard by someone. They ask you a lot of questions. They want to know everything about you. And you think, no one has ever been so interested in me before. People always you know, talk about themselves, but this person is so interested in me. This feels really good. You feel very special in their eyes. You notice that everyone likes you notice that everyone likes them because you know this is a I'm chiming in here, there's a particular type of love bomber that is very well liked by people around them narcissistically. So you feel very special in their eyes and you notice that everyone likes them and you feel special because you're in a relationship with them because so many people like them. You fall deeply in love with them. You've never felt like this before. It's so fast and so intense. You feel like, oh my goodness, this is my true soulmate. You've never fallen in love so quickly. They start talking about getting married and having quid, kids really quickly. They start talking about moving in together. They start talking about you know, growing old together and you know, having a retirement plan together. And they say things like, it's you and me against the world. You're the most beautiful person I've ever met. I want to take care of you. I want to protect you from the evils of the world. Our love is bigger than any other love in the world. I can't believe we have so much in common. I love you more than anything in the world. I love you more than life itself. You start spending all your time with them. You call and they, they call and text you all the time. And that feels good because you've had past partners that never texted you at all. And this, this person texts you all the time. They tell you how great you are. For the first time, you feel truly accepted and loved. You feel safe. You feel like they would protect you and build you up. Soon your lives are completely intertwined. You don't do anything without them, but you enjoy it. Your friends and family seem concerned about how fast things are moving, but they're also happy for you and they like your new partner because your partner is charming. But you start to see your partner's bad side. Sometimes they get jealous. Sometimes they get angry. They always have a good explanation for their behavior, though, and you chalk it all up to stress. And you tell yourself, you know what? It's normal that couples will fight sometimes. No one's perfect. Then one night, you have a big fight. You don't know how the fight started, but it was a big one. Your partner is convinced that it is all your fault. You're confused. You feel very uneasy during the, during the argument. You, don't, uh, you do everything you can to resolve the conflict. You apologize for everything just to make the conflict go away. Things return to normal, and you feel mostly okay again. After the big fight, more fights follow. You start to have fights more frequently. And you find yourself walking on eggshells to avoid getting into an argument. You find yourself having secret arguments with them in your head. While you're in the shower, while you're driving to the store, you think about different things you want to say to them. But you would never say these things to this person because you know it wouldn't go well. And you don't really know why, but you feel really scared to be honest with them. But you don't really think about it much because it's not very useful to think about. You just think, well, you know, it's just better just to keep some, some things to myself. You notice that they no longer compliment you anymore. They no longer say nice things, and you crave that again. You tell yourself that, you know what, it's normal for long-term relationships to be distant sometimes. You long for the early days with them, and you strive to get your relationship back to that place. You start to notice things that indicate that they aren't being honest with you all the time. Little inconsistencies here and there. But you convince yourself that you're just being paranoid. Their phone lights up and you notice a text from a mutual friend. You go over to the phone and you look at it and it indicates that your partner is having an affair. 
and you're shocked. You confront your partner about the affair. They deny it. They get angry. They get angry that you looked at your phone. They argue. They say you're crazy. They say you're paranoid. And after a barrage of insults, you really don't know what to think. But you put it behind you because you don't really know what else to do. Things are normal for a while. For a while. But then you get an email from another person saying that they have been having an affair with your partner for a long time. This time, you know that it's true. You confront your partner about the affair. Again, they deny it. They get angry at you. They call you crazy. But you stand your ground. Eventually, your partner admits to having the affair. Your partner cries. They apologize. They say they'll never do it again. They seem sincere. You hear, you hear the same things that you used to hear all of a sudden. They start to compliment you again. They start to say things like, it's just you and me. We have a special relationship. You're the most amazing person in the world. I love you more than life itself. I can't believe I did that. I'm so sorry. Please, you know, let's go back to the way things were. And for the first time in a long time, you feel like you have your old partner back. You feel good for the first time in a long time. You feel optimistic for the first time in a long time. And the cycle repeats itself. They slowly distance. You try to please, they hurt you, you try to please, eventually you pull away, they pull you back in, you feel better, they distance, you try to please, they hurt you, you try to please, eventually you pull away, they pull you back in, you feel better, they distance, and so on. All right, so that is a, you know, one possible typical story of a romantic type of love bombing. There are many, and I'll get into some of the nuances later, but if this sounds familiar to you or someone that you know, or even that you've done this before, because it's, it's it, it, love bombing is a pretty common thing. So some of you listening, I'm guessing statistically, have actually love bombed other people. It doesn't make you an evil person, not the way the internet will paint you to, out to be. Now, certainly there's a very evil version of love bombing. But in my experience, typical love bombing is not on purpose. And that, that's what I'm going to get into today. This is the Psychology in Seattle podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Kirk Honda. I'm a therapist and a professor. This episode is just for patrons of the podcast. So if you are not a patron, this episode is going to end right now. If you want to hear the rest of this episode and the hundreds of other episodes that are only available to patrons, you have to go to patreon.com, become a patron of the podcast, and you'll get access to this episode and hundreds of others. In this episode, I'm going to go over the definitions, the literature, the types of love bombers, how to tell the difference between love bombing and just falling in love, my personal experiences with love bombing, the history of the term love bombing, how it's being discussed in the media, and of course, talking about Big Ed from 90 Day Fiance. So if you want to hear the whole thing, go to uh, Patreon and become a patron patron of the podcast (laughs) if you want. Do it now. (laughs) 